Do your hunts go like this? Would you rather have them look like this instead? Hello fellow hunters and soon to become hammer mains. Loco Ghoul is back with another generation's ultimate guy. This time, I will cover the classic hammer experience, guild style. Guild hammer is simple and very solid, but it requires lots of practice and monster knowledge. In this guide, I will try to show you a stepwise method to learn how to use it effectively. If you find it too clunky or have struggled to use it, this guide is for you. I will split this guide in four sections. First, I will go over the key moves you should master in order of difficulty. The level 3 charge, the level 2 charge, and finally the golf swing. Second chapter will be punishing the monster when it is knocked down. Third chapter looks at exploiting roars and openings. The last chapter will cover how to incorporate stagger control. The level 3 charge is a simple 2 hit move. The second hit is a slam that deals good damage and what you should focus on landing. We will practice two ways to land this. First, find large openings that are easy to recognize and exploit. Just charge until the second flash, aim for the head and release while neutral. Very simple. Don't get discouraged if you miss the timing. The idea behind starting to practice with this move is to gain a sense of good positioning and timing that will be needed for later. The other way to hit level 3 charges is abusing AI patterns, like the turnaround animation. Be patient and practice a lot. You will notice your muscle memory kicking in if you are consistent. Once you are familiar with the timing, you can also use it for dunks. If you release the charge while still moving, you will get this top spin animation. Pressing X after 3 spins will result in a golf swing finisher. If you don't press X on time a different finisher will come out. This move is often disliked by many hunters, mainly because it gets you stuck in a spinning animation without being able to dodge. But it has its uses. In general, when the timing is not that strict, you can try landing the spinning golf swing over the regular slam as it does more damage and stun. Just remember that the last hit is important, don't try to land the spin moves as they deal pitiful damage. Time the animation so that you can recover as soon as you hit. Here is a short gameplay example. You don't want to be charging all the time. Instead, you want to dodge and maneuver around the monster's moves so that you can get a window for your level 3 charges. Slow and steady wins the race. Now is the turn to practice the level 2 charge. This is an uppercut-like attack that brings you a bit forward. Because you can't hold the charge forever, it can be tricky to use it first. The idea is to use it to close the distance between you and the monster. 
Practice to get the timing right. Charging early will get you into a level 3 charge, while starting too late will result in a level 1 charge. Take advantage of the uppercut animation and try to connect heads that are sitting higher than usual. An easy way to practice this is trying to hit while running parallel to the monster, as opposed to directly into it. Although it doesn't do a lot of damage, it has nice utility and deals good stun. Practice to get faster KOs. Adding the level 2 charge to your repertoire will let you go in and out as needed while still dealing damage. The last move we will review is the most important one, the golf swing. The golf swing is the last animation of a three-hit combo. This combo can be started from a strong pound or from a side pound. The side pound route gives you super armor through the animation and also comes slightly faster. The idea behind Guild Hammer is to land as many golf swings as possible. Except, you will rarely have the chance to just walk to the monster and land the whole combo. If you recklessly start mashing, then the golf swing will not hit the head. This move requires finesse and good aim. Good positioning but bad timing can make you look like this. Learn both the monster's movements and your combo timing, so that you can land golf swings. This is not an easy move to master, so be patient and practice a lot. I will recommend the same tips that we used for landing the level 3 charges. Start with slow moves that have big windows. Openings where you were using level 3 charges to punish. You can now try to squeeze in a golf swing instead. Remember, the most important part is to land the golf swing. Don't try to time it so that the first two hits hit. If you have enough time, then the extra damage is welcomed. But in most cases, just start the animation so that the golf swing hits the head of the monster. As mentioned before, you can try to land a golf swing when the monster turns. The more knowledge you get on the monster, the more you can practice your golf swing on signature moves. If you start head sniping monsters when they turn around, you might want to use the AXX combo instead. That is the one with a side smash starter. This comes out faster than the strong pound starter, and makes it easier to time once you get used to it. The last thing to remember is that this attack is angled. Take advantage of the animation and make contact as the hammer is at the peak of its motion. Do this by positioning yourself facing backwards to the monster.
This concludes our moves review. You should know by now the core moves to use and how to use them. Keep practicing your golf swing skills. They will be needed for the next chapter. If you are hitting your golf swings, you will start getting more and more KOs. What to do on a knockdown monster? Guild Hammer allows the use of the Hunter Art Spinning Miu 3. This Hunter Art deals good damage, but takes its sweet time to complete the animation. Similar to other moves, the last hit is the most damaging one, so make sure you land that one. With that in mind, generally speaking you want to use Spinning Meteor 3 a bit early when the monster is knocked down, otherwise you could miss the last hit. Just make sure your position is good and you are hitting the monster's head. Additionally, depending on the monster, sometimes you can follow up with another golf swing combo. Practice your Punisher according to the matchup. Unfortunately, Spinning Meteor 3 will not be available at all times. When your bar is not full yet, the best punisher is golf swings. However, as easy as it sounds, it still takes a bit of practice to land, as most monsters have an animation where they move their heads sideways or some other BS that ruins your punish. Position yourself carefully and watch as the monster's head moves, so that you time your attacks perfectly. With practice, you can deal lots of damage just with golf swing combos. However, you must make sure the actual golf swing hits. When connecting golf swing combos, you might feel natural to use a level charge one right after the first golf swing. From experience though, it is usually better to just wait for the animation to end and start your next golf swing combo. It is slightly faster than the level one, charge root. If you need slight reposition, just walk a little in between combos. Monster knowledge and experience will let you land those golf swings on downed monsters, even if they have wonky animations, like Lackeyacris. Once you get used to it, you will manage to land several golf swings in one KO. Count how many combos I land on Mizutsune here. With good position and earplug skill, I am able to hit four golf swing combos in a row. The skill earplugs let you hit golf swings while the monster roars. Just like when the monster is stunned, timing the golf swing to hit can take a bit of practice. Typically, you don't want to start mashing the combo input before the monster roars. You want to start the combo when the monster starts roaring. This changes slightly from monster to monster, but make a mental note to be methodical about it.
This section might seem redundant, but starting off with the right foot with a golf swing combo can lead to scripted scenarios, like the monster enraging and roaring again, or even just getting closer to your first KO very early into the hunt. Here's an example on how to apply adjustments. Besides rage quitting the hunt, try to understand what made you miss the golf swing. In this case, Rathian's head moves forward while roaring but then it pulls back. If I stand just close enough to hit while it is roaring, then my golf swing will be out of range. So, next time I position myself behind her head, so that my golf swing will connect even after she moves backwards. Let's check again with Rathalos. He shares the same animation, so I know I need to stay behind his head for the golf swing to hit. But, I muffed it up on the next roar, and I eat his fireball with fries on the side. The next time, I correct my position and get both golf swing combos. After two golf swing combos, he should be one golf swing away to get stunned. If you hit a monster part past a certain threshold, you will cause a stagger animation. During your hunts, perhaps you have noticed a stagger animation setting up a golf swing by chance. Why is this important? Because the same stagger can also ruin your golf swing setup if you don't pay attention. Instead of leaving it to chance, learn to use it to your advantage. Time a strong pound to trigger a stagger so that you can get a free golf swing. This can turn into big damage if mastered properly. You can use a damage calculator to know how many hits will take you to get just below the target damage, or you can test on your own. The idea is still the same though, build up damage and use a strong pound to get a golf swing. Add this tech to your hunts, to have yet another way to land more golf swings. I will show you how to do a test on your own. First get a stagger so the counter is reset. I am using strong pounds to get to the stagger because they are easy to land and don't require charging. After landing two of them, I guesstimate that the next strong pound will cause the stagger. There you go! After a stagger, I hit Garuga with a level 1 charge, then a level 2 charge. This build-up lets me use a strong pound to cause a stagger, which lets me connect a golf swing. Stagger control will limit the monster's movement and open new windows for your attacks. Test for yourself and find ways to use staggers to your advantage. On matchups where the stagger threshold is higher, you can create stagger loops. Whenever you use the strong pound to cause a stagger, the golf swing will bring you right below the next damage target. Use another strong pound and keep the cycle going. As a side note, you can also use stagger on other parts to cause a trip. This will make the monster easier to hit in the head. However, that is more effective for cutting weapons. If you follow all the tips I have mentioned throughout this guide, 
you won't need to use this strategy, although it is still useful to know. For example, if the monster is limping away, you can use a stagger to keep it in the same area and hopefully finish it off. There are other instances where you can also benefit from staggering parts. If it brings immediate reward, then there is no reason not to go for it. Just don't waste too much time hitting parts that have low hit zones when you can be hitting the head instead. Remember all staggers do not share the same animation. But, if you get used to it, you can find ways to take advantage of it. That concludes my guild hammer guide. I tried covering the important concepts to succeed with this style. I will leave the rest for you to find out as you put my tips to practice. With patience and proper monster knowledge, you can tackle even the hardest matchups. I hope you find this content useful, and that you can now bonk monsters with confidence. I will leave on the description, links to two speedruns that showcase Guild Hammer played perfectly, so that you can identify some of the concepts you watched on this video. Good luck on your hunts and thank you for watching.